Once we have a sequence, one of the natural things to do with that sequence is add all of its terms together. So let a n be a sequence. We're going to introduce sigma notation, which is going to keep us from having to write a whole bunch of plus signs over and over again. This notation says that the sum from k to m of the a n's is equal to a k plus a k plus 1 plus etc plus a m minus 1 up to a m. k and m are the lower and upper bounds of the sum respectively. So let's see it in action. We have the sum from 1 to 4 of the sequence 3n plus 8. If we plug a 1 in for n, we get 3 times 1 plus 8 makes 11. If we substitute in a 2, then we get 3 times 2 is 6, plus 8 is 14. If we substitute in a 3, we get 3 times 3 makes 9, plus 8 is 17. And then when we plug in a 4, we get 20. 14 plus 17 together make 31. 31 plus 11 is 42, plus 20 makes 62, and that's the value of the sum. It's pretty common in computer science contexts to see double sums. Double sums are calculated one sum at a time. When a sum is rectangular, like this one, we can work either from the outside in or from the inside out. What's important is that neither index depends on the other one. If I iterate over the case first, I get the sum from 1 to 3 of 2 minus j. This is the k equals 2 term of the sum, plus the sum from 1 to 3 of 3 minus j, this is the k equals 3 term, plus the sum from 1 to 3 of 4 minus j, that's the k equals 4 term, plus the sum from 1 to 4 of 5 minus j, which is the k equals 5 term. Notice that now instead of having a double sum, I've got four single sums, and I can calculate each one of those single sums separately. So as j goes from 1 to 3, 2 minus j is 1, uh, 2 minus 2 is 0, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Then for the next one, we have 3 minus 1, which is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, 4 minus 1 is 3, 4 minus 2 is 2, 4 minus 3 is 1, 5 minus 1 is 4, 5 minus 2 is 3, and 5 minus 3 is 2. Add all these together, we get uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 2 plus 2 uh, is 6, plus 3 is 9, 3 plus 3 is another 6, makes 15, plus 4 is 19, minus 1 is 18. Now I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to do it the other way, where I iterate over the j's first, and then do the k's. Remember that my sum should be 18. All right, this time we're going to iterate the j's first. So we're going to have the j equals one term, which is the sum from two to five of k minus one. Then we're going to have j be 2, then we're going to have j be 3, once again we do the single sums individually now, 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, 4 minus 1 is 3, 5 minus 1 is 4, 2 minus 2 is 0, 3 minus 2 is 1, 4 minus 2 is 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, 4 minus 3 is 1, and 5 minus 3 is 2. Notice that these are actually the same numbers as they were last time, so when we add them all together we will get 18. Here's an example where we can't work in whatever order we like because the j's depend on the k's. So the best practice here is to start with the k's. That's equal to the sum as j 
j goes from 1 to 2. This is the k equals 2 term of the sum. 2 minus j plus the sum from j equals 1 to 3 of 3 minus j. That's the k equals 3 term plus the sum from j equals 1 to 4 of 4 minus j. This is when k is 4. And then when k is 5, we get the sum from 1 to 5 of 5 minus j. Then we iterate each sum individually again. Uh, when j equals 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. Uh, 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 minus 1 is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, 4 minus j is 3 when j is 1, 4 minus 2 is 2, 4 minus 3 is 1, 4 minus 4 is 0, 5 minus 1 is 4, 5 minus 2 is 3, 5 minus 3 is 2, 5 minus 4 is 1, and 5 minus 5 is 0. There's no reason the sum should have the same value as our last two because it is a different sum. So its value is going to be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 makes 4. 3 twos make 6, that's 10. 3 plus 3 is 6, so now we're at 16 plus 4 makes 